Suddenly, someone passed by them with incredible speed, leaving Su Mo wondering about his identity. Now that no one is around, the latter withdrew his hand from Chao Yang's mouth and informed her that they would go pick up some things first. On the other hand, Chao Yang heaved a sigh of relief after going through that situation. Upon reaching their destination, Su Emo removed the grasses he had used to conceal the secret passageway. Afterward, he informed Chao Yang that she could enter. Inside, Chao Yang was taken aback to find a hidden door in that location. Right then, her young master informed her that all the doors in the secret realm are hidden away in such locations. Noticing her deep in thought, Su Emo reminded her to hurry over. Suddenly, Chao Yang exclaimed loudly that the person who created this cloud spirit secret realm is too dark. Upon hearing this, Su Mo reminisced about his past self working diligently on his computer. However, Chao Yang's current words hurt his feelings, as he was the one responsible for creating the secret realm. He felt deeply upset and angered after hearing her label him as a gloomy person. Nevertheless, he couldn't endure her insults any longer so he decided to punish her with a finger flick on her forehead. Then, he commanded her to stop talking nonsense and come in quickly. As they roamed within the secret realm, Chao Yang, with her hand held by Su Mo due to her inability to endure the windstorm, inquired whether they could locate the door in such a place. Out of nowhere, a massive creature emerged in front of them, hindering them from moving forward. During that time, Su Mo instructed Chao Yang to handle it, as he didn't want to waste his strength fighting a small foe. Despite Chao Yang's concerns about her ability to defeat it, when she observed the monster gathering its spiritual energy to launch its attack, she rushed without hesitation to confront it. Using two palms of spiritual energy, she blocked the monster's mouth to prevent it from shooting its beam of energy toward them. While in the air, she declared that she would never allow a mere monster to harm her master. Meanwhile, Lin Yi was guiding Lu Ruashua to the location of the treasure, though he wasn't entirely certain about it. Just then, Lu Ruashua smacked him on the head and told him to be more precise. Following this, she mentioned that the immortal herb should be nearby. Observing her confident expression, Lin Yi asked her how she could be so certain. Lu Ruashua hesitated to respond because the one who informed her about the herb was Su Mo. She felt regret and anger imagining that Su Emo was enjoying his time with the witch Chao Yang. Witnessing her on the verge of tears, Lin Yi attempted to console her. However, Lu Ruashua told him to stop talking nonsense and to keep moving. Upon reaching their destination, Lu Ruashua was shocked to find out that the herb had already been taken by someone else. During that time, Chao Yang had already defeated the monster by slicing it into pieces yet she found herself thoroughly worn out from the strenuous fight. In that very moment, Su Emo approached her, handing over the herb and advising her to eat it. Chao Yang then remarked to her young master, Isn't this the herb you acquired on the first level? Nodding in agreement, Su Emo mentioned that he had gathered a few treasures during their travels. He then insisted that Chao Yang should eat the herb, stating that it would be more useful for her. After expressing her gratitude to her young master, Chao Yang swallowed the herb without hesitation. Meanwhile, Lu Ruashua, discovering that another herb had been dug up, was so furious that she struck the ground with her fist, creating a hole. Then, she harbored suspicions that Su Emo might be the one who took the herb, though she wasn't completely sure. Witnessing her confused expression and absent-mindedness, Lin Yi attempted to wake her up by waving his hand, but it was in vain. Consequently, he touched her cheek with his finger as a final resort. Noticing Lin Yi's move, Lu Ruoshue was infuriated and forcefully pushed his hand away, demanding an explanation. She then jumped at him, intending to give him a beating. Lin Yi implored her to spare him, and in response, Lu Ruoshue insisted that he find the door so they could proceed to the next level. Nodding in agreement, Lin Yi asked her to get up from him first. Upon realizing the awkwardness of their situation, both of them felt embarrassed. Meanwhile, Chao Yang engaged in a battle with another monster, 
swiftly avoiding its fierce attacks. At that moment, Su Emo remarked that her attacks were lacking in strength and suggested she utilize her spiritual power. Acting on her young master's advice, Chao Yang used her spiritual energy to deflect the monster's stinger attack. Abruptly, Su Emo warned her to be cautious of an attack from her left side. Upon hearing the warning, she focused her spiritual power on her arm to counter the monster's fierce attack, breaking its long tail into pieces until she reached its head. There, she employed the cold spirit soul shatter technique, ultimately defeating the monster with a single punch. However, she felt incredibly fatigued after the fierce battle. Following this, Su Emo commented that Chao Yang had been reckless and had made poor decisions, leading to an injury in her arm. In a different area, Chao Yang faced another monster, leading to a fierce confrontation. When the monster lunged toward her at high speed, a worried expression appeared on Chao Yang's face. At that moment, she utilized her spiritual energy to shape a weapon, but unfortunately, it was shattered into two pieces by the monster's attack. In that moment, the monster seized the opportunity when Chao Yang was in a tough situation and launched another attack to finish her off. However, Chao Yang managed to dodge it at the last moment. Just then, she clenched her fist, delivering one powerful punch to kill the monster. Afterward, Su Emo applied his healing skill to mend Chao Yang's injuries, causing her to be quite surprised. Afterward, Chao Yang expressed her gratitude to her young master for the treatment. They then proceeded on their journey, reaching the cave and walking until they arrived at their destination. At that moment, Su Emo raised his hand and fired a beam of energy at the wall. Upon its destruction, they uncovered a secret door. Upon entering, Chao Yang was fascinated by the beauty of the place, her face filled with joy and happiness. Suddenly, Su Emo covered her mouth with his hand and told her to hold her breath, cautioning about the poisonous fragrance in the area. Just then, he enveloped Chao Yang's body with a protective energy layer. Hearing this, Chao Yang became worried about her young master, but Su Emo assured her that he would be okay. When he picked up the flower, he explained to Chao Yang that for a poison alchemist, the hallucinogenic fragrance is a priceless opportunity. Hearing this, Chao Yang was truly astonished. Right then, her stomach growled from hunger, prompting Su Emo to ask if she was angry. Chao Yang nodded in agreement. Suddenly, Su Emo waved his hand, summoning a portal leading to the fourth level, and informed Chao Yang that they would go there to rest and get something to eat. At the same time, one of the three elders reprimanded his disciples, calling them idiots due to their inability to discover the door leading to the next realm, despite two hours of searching. One of his disciples responded that this realm is vast and boundless, and finding the door is like finding a needle in the sea. Elder Lay stated that if they can't find it, then they'll have to resort to another method. The other elder interrupted him, saying, Do you mean the art of divination? Amidst this conversation, Elder Tang explained that this ability consumes a lot and depletes life force, so he advised him to think twice about that. With a determined look, Elder Lei explained loudly that there's no need for them to say more words and reminded them of the purpose of coming here, stating that compared to the opportunities in the secret realm, losing a few decades of lifespans is nothing much. The scene changed to where Lu Ruashua was in the midst of a fierce battle against a massive lion. As Lu Ruashua swung her weapon at the beast, the latter counterattacked with its claw, causing Lu Ruashua's weapon to shatter into pieces. Seeing the beast charge toward her with incredible speed, Lu Ruashua started screaming as she realized she wouldn't be able to dodge in time. Fortunately, Lin Yi managed to save her from inevitable death. However, the beast launched another attack from above with its big mouth wide open. Realizing that there was no way they could escape in time, Lin Yi used his body as a human shield to protect Lu Ruashua. Refusing to give up, Lu Ruashua tried her hardest to reach the sword, grabbed it, and struck the lion on its mouth, dropping it dead. Meanwhile, Lin Yi, 
who was still unaware of the situation, was screaming that he was going to die. Just then, Lu Ruashua asked him how long he intended to lie there. Seeing her upset look, Lin Yi tried to convince her that he did it to save her. However, Lu Ruashua thanked him for saving her by kicking him so hard in his balls, making him scream in pain. Then, she told him to get lost. After breathing a sigh of relief, Lu Ruashua asked Lin Yi if he had managed to find the door. Enduring the pain that his little brother suffered, Lin Yi pointed in a certain direction, stating that it was over there. Hearing this, Lu Ruashua was astonished and couldn't believe it, so she hurried over to verify if what Lin Yi said was true. In the meantime, Chao Yang joyfully roasted the pork legs. After setting the table, she couldn't restrain herself and hurried towards the roasted pork leg. With saliva flowing from her mouth, she declared that she would start eating now. Upon taking a bite, she complimented its delicious taste. Following that, Chao Yang inquired of her young master if he wanted something to eat. However, she received no response as he was engrossed in the green gym, remarking that it would be useful later on.